What is going on guys? It has been a freaking while. I have had a bajillion requests about piano tutorials to do and I haven't done any. So I apologize for that. I have been away for like months not attending to YouTube. Uh, there is an actual reason for it but I don't really want to sort of waste time in this video talking about it. I'll put something in the description if you really want to know what's been going on. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Producer Trio Cash Cash's latest album Blood Sweat and Three Years. Now I've been a fan of these guys for probably about like seven years I reckon since I was like 13 years old. Um, usually that's probably something to be ashamed of uh, but with these guys what I really like about them is that their style like literally changed with my interests in music so you know when I was 13 their style was this real like kind of almost like a pop band type thing mixed with a little bit of electronic. If the, probably the closest thing I could compare it to would be something like Paramore um, in their more modern days where you know it's the playful kind of electronic stuff mixed with a bit of rock, bit of pop. Um, yeah and then slowly they kind of evolved into more of the mainstream EDM scene that we know today um, as my interest also went from the pop band, electronic, electro-pop, whatever you want to call it, to today's modern-day EDM. Um, I don't really want to call it EDM, but you know what I mean, like the electronic music scene or whatever. But yeah, it's really their first album they've released since they sort of reinvented themselves with this style. So usually when I review albums, I kind of pull them apart and, you know, read a little booklet inside. Um, but with this one, there's really nothing that interesting. It's just kind of credits and stuff, you know. Some albums have nice little artwork and heaps of thank you notes and, you know, other fun stuff. Um, the best thing I could really find with this was like a little thank you note behind the CD cover. It just says, thank you to our loving parents for always supporting us through thick and thin. And then it lists like a bajillion names, so I'm not going to go through all of those. Uh, but anyway, for those who don't know, I'll give a little bit of background information about Cash Cash. As I said before, um, they're a producer trio. They come from Roseland, New Jersey. Uh, their style is, honestly, like, it used to be really kind of electro house mixed with pop, a bit of progressive house here and there. But really, they have reinvented themselves so much over the years, I don't know if I can really put, like, a single genre on them anymore. Uh, as the title of the album implies, Blood Sweat in Three Years, this is really a collection of their work throughout the past three years since they have, you know, invented themselves. So it really does have quite a variety and that's probably the biggest thing that you'll notice about this album, uh, especially during your first listening, is just how diverse a lot of their stuff is. You've got Tropical, Progressive, Electro, Future House, uh, a bit of pop, even a bit of hip-hop actually. So I get on to my impressions with this thing. Um, I purposely left it a few days, um, you know, since I got it to actually review it, just because I found, especially with the last two albums that I've reviewed before, um, I really, like, my opinion sort of changes on it a lot uh, once I listen to it a lot more, and um, I definitely found that with this one as well. It's like, first listening, I, I feel like you just, it doesn't do it justice. You need to listen to it several times before you really make an informed imp opinion. And I've often found that I start to actually like a lot of albums more the more I listen to them, um, especially like the first few times. So the album opens with Cash Cash is probably the latest uh, effort in a new kind of genre that they haven't really done before, which is Tropical House. Um, the first three tracks, How to Love, Broken Drum and uh, Millionaire, uh, they all have a fairly like conventional tropical house theme to them, but it's also mixed with a more radio-friendly pop vibe. I can see Cash Cash have really tried to jump on this trend of the tropical house genre, which is really like taking off at the moment, and then tried to put this like just radio-friendly pop kind of tinge on it to you know make it more radio-worthy instead of just being popular in the EDM scene because. Uh, a lot of their focus I've noticed, especially um, on this album, is that they're not aiming for the EDM scene alone. Like, the scene they're looking for is a mainstream audience. A lot of the stuff on this album is really, like, radio-friendly. It's not, like, um, very kind of uh, in the EDM niche or whatever. So of these first three tracks, I'd probably say How to Love. Uh, would be my favourite. It's not like it's the most catchiest, but it just has this really kind of chill vibe during the drop. Um, 
Yeah, it's fairly calming vocals, and it would like work well acoustically as well. In fact, I believe they did do an acoustic version of it. Uh, the other two are decent. I found those two, though, were probably a little more generic as far as their pop structure went. Um, of those two, I probably preferred Millionaire just because it had um, a little bit of an infectious kind of catchy verse that, you know, really sort of um, got me in. Whereas with Broken Drum, they had like this saxophone hook during the drop, and I sort of got that impression that they were trying to sort of jump on that trend of having like another instrument play a kind of really repetitive, catchy hook and it just, it felt a little cheap. Uh, it's worth noting though that Millionaire actually features Nelly. That's another thing I should probably mention about this album. It is like full of collaborations with artists from everywhere. Not just like EDM or Electronic, it is like uh, just artists from anywhere. As I said, you got Nelly, uh, Busta Rhymes even, like Bob, uh, John Zesnick, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but from the Goo Goo Dolls. Uh, BB Rex, obviously she's quite famous. But yeah, as I said, like just artists from everywhere and I like that even though the whole album technically is electronic, they've really tried to put each of these artists' styles into their own electronic style, which is pretty neat. So the next track on the album is Hero, which features Christina Perry on vocals. Um, this one was quite, I could tell like it was written um, to suit an acoustic arrangement, and I really actually quite like this. Even though it didn't have like a catchy pop hook, I it really just sort of showcased Cash Cash's ability as songwriters, and I think that's really what they are at their core. They're songwriters. Like they're not like some you know artists who you know did one song that got popular on Beatport you know randomly, and then suddenly they're just blown up and they're at, like ultra and doing a million different festivals. These guys obviously were a band and they transition into this scene. And that really shows in a lot of the music on this album, um, especially acoustic ones, as I said, like Hero. Uh, it just shows their ability as songwriters and that they really do care a lot about emotion. Um, not just through chord progressions either, but just, you know, sort of like acoustic um, ballads. I don't know if I'd say ballads, but just acoustic music. You, you could tell that that's had a real like influence, especially on their workflow, because uh, I have heard that the way they write their music is always with starting with like acoustic instruments. They never go straight to their digital audio workstation and start, you know, doing everything from there. They always start with like actual instruments stripped back acoustically. So yeah, so far the album's pretty decent. I mean, it's nothing that'll blow your mind or, you know, be your new jam for the next three years or whatever. But uh, the next song on the album just totally like took it up a notch for me personally. It, probably like took it up a bunch of notches actually. The structure of this song, the variety within this song, the instrumentation is all just like amazing. So it kind of starts with like a piano with a kind of pop voice and you feel like you know what direction it's going in and you feel like okay this might be either progressive house, might turn electro. I try and explain the drop in this but it's really one of those things you just sort of have to hear for yourself. Um, I showed my friend who generally hates sort of progressive house pop and any sort of generic drops and yeah, he like really liked this as well. And then just when you sort of think you've got it figured out, then they bring in like a hip hop element to it, like with Busta Rhymes just rapping at like a million miles an hour and it's insane. And then there's like this brass section for a bridge and then they go back to the drop again and it's so like... I want to explain it, but I can't, so you have to listen to it. So the next track is Aftershock, uh, which is a sort of progressive house effort. Um, it doesn't stand up to the previous track, unfortunately. It's a solid progressive house track. It One thing I do like about this one is that the drop really does punch through. It's a pop-style drop. It mightn't be the most catchiest one that you're going to remember as much as, say, like, Take Me Home or Surrender. Um, but it is, like it really punches through because the verses, they're a little tamer and then when the drop comes, it's quite explosive. It really like pops in your face. And I feel like this is probably what you would consider Cash Cash's signature style if they do have one. Uh, but at the same time, it does have that emotion that's still there. And I like that even in more of the electronic 
uh, progressive house driven tracks, they're still able to pack this acoustic emotion that they've used in their more pop style tracks as well. Uh, next up, The Gun is the second hip hop track on this album. It doesn't quite live up to the standard of Devil, um, probably at all. The first drop in I did really quite like. It's not as hardcore, uh, but you know, it's a solid hip hop drop and it's probably not as electronic, I would say. But then I found after that first drop, it sort of just lost my interest. It, um, yeah, it didn't really go back to that same first drop again. And I was like, uh, you know how sometimes songs do that? They like have a really good like first drop or they'll do something really good at the start and then you think it's going to go back to that, but then it just never does and it just kind of goes into something else. That was sort of what I got with this track. Um, next track though, Turn, I really did like. That was another uh, acoustic effort, which again, Cash Cash are really good at. Um, this one's featuring a little daylight. Um, yeah, just a solid. Uh, I mean, it's not an acoustic track, but it's as I said, it has that acoustic influence. It's a pop track more so than a kind of you know typical electronic track. I believe this one did have a sort of progressive house drop, um, but honestly, the rest of it's really like any kind of pop thing that you would listen to. Uh, Escarole is an interesting one. This is actually Cash Cash's attempt at doing Future House, and to be honest, I actually quite liked it. It um, it's quite explicit, <laughs> so uh, just a warning there. Like it's probably one of the most explicit songs you will ever listen to. But that aside, the instrumentation in it is quite punchy, um, and honestly, it's one of the best Future House songs I would say I've heard this year. Uh, and I do listen to a lot of Future House as it's one of my favourite genres. Uh, Lightning, the next track featuring John Zesnick, it's a bit of a hit and miss. I've heard a lot of people say they didn't quite like it just because it didn't really do John's voice or style or something justice. I guess probably mainly from people who were fans of the Goo Dolls were saying that. I personally haven't really heard them much so I can't really say for myself. But I mean, still credit to them because um, Progressive House, I know, it does often seem like quite a saturated area of electronic music. Um, and doing anything that stands out in the slightest as far as Progressive House goes, I think is quite an achievement just because it's really hard to make a hook that really, like, captures you. Probably more so than any other genre even. Arrows in the Dark is their second Future House um, track. and. Again, like, I wasn't really as keen on this one as Escarol. Um, it was, like, it was decent, but it wasn't, like, amazing. I, I don't know. I, I don't really have much to say about this one. I don't really have heaps of stuff to say about all these tracks, so I'm just gonna, like, skip through to the next one. Again, We Will Live, not much to say about it, just a progressive house track. This is probably one of my least favourite on the album. Uh, yeah, haven't got much else to say with it. Features... Night Terrors of 1927, there you go. Uh, track 13, Butter Boom. I did not feel like this track should have been on this album, to be honest. Just because, like, the style of it, it sounded like something that you would hear in a radio podcast or as part of a festival set. It was like a more kind of cliche, uh, Electro House banger, I suppose you would say, more so than a structured song. That's probably the main issue I have with it. Um, I don't know, I guess you could probably say the same about Escarole, to be honest, but... I don't know, this one... I didn't really like it anyway, just because the drop in it, I just found, was so generic. It sounded like something you would, you know, hear on some really generic artist radio show, and I'm not going to name any names, but... If you can guess who I'm talking about, then... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, once again though, big change in standards here, up with the next track, Take Me Home, featuring BB Rexa. This is uh, their most popular track to date. Uh, I remember it going all over the radio in like 2014. Um, and honestly, despite what people say about BB Rexa and how, you know, David Guetta was the one that like made her big and everything, I really honestly think it was Cash Cash who kind of, you know, put her into her fame. Um, because this was really the first track I heard of her on, and I believe one of the first tracks she actually sung on. Um, I'm not sure if she did any original stuff before this one, but this was definitely one of her earlier ones. Um, this is, yeah, it's a really solid track, and probably, uh, I'd say maybe my second favourite, I don't know, maybe On Par With Devil. It's a, it's a decent track, and I'm sure you've all heard it, so I'm not gonna, like, go on about it. But, yeah, no, it's a pretty decent track. 
Sweat, I actually quite liked, uh, featuring Jenna Andrews. I don't actually know who that is. If it's someone really famous, now I feel really bad. Hopefully it's not. Um, the drop in this one um, was a lot more subdued. It wasn't like a progressive house drop. It was more of a pop song, actually. Again, you can kind of tell a little bit of the acoustic vibes, but this one was probably more tailored into... Um, what you hear more often in pop today, more so than electronics, so maybe the uh, closest thing I could compare it to would probably be like Selena Gomez or something. A little bit of electronic influence, but um, still mostly pop influence. The drop in it is really quite minimal, and that's probably what I like most about it, is it has like these sort of like droplet sounds going, and I don't know, you have to, again, it's one of those things you sort of just have to hear, um, because me trying to explain sound design will just kind of make me look like an idiot. And finally, the last closing track on a strong one is Surrender, uh, featuring Julia Michaels, although she's not credited. She actually has quite a lot of talent, even though she, like, never is, like, publicly featured on any track. She actually um, produces, I think, a lot of artist tracks, like, big artists that you know about. I think um, she produced, like some of Justin Bieber's songs, and one of Justin Bieber's songs, I think she produced like all of Selena Gomez's latest album, probably a bunch of other pop artists as well, if you just Google her then you'll see. Um, but as far as the actual song goes, uh, I felt like this was a really solid follow-up to Take Me Home, um, because this was like, I think that's what Cash Cash were aiming to do when they released this song, because it was like their next single after they released Take Me Home and that went huge. The hook in it is really catchy, it's for some people, I, they've said it's quite, like, irritating, but, like, to me it's a good kind of irritating, and I feel like it still probably took, you know, a reasonable amount of skill to come up with it. I guess it's often hard to tell in Progressive House, like, what is it in a hook that is going to get people in? You know, like, there's so many, like, Progressive House tracks where there's a catchy hook, but for whatever reason it doesn't get you in, and then there's other Progressive House tracks where there's a catchy hook and it does, and I can never, like, put my finger on what exactly it is that makes some good and some not, but this was a good one anyway. Um, again, it has quite a lot of emotion in it and um, meaning in the lyrics, I guess, if you care about that. Anyway, that was their full album, 16 songs. Uh, I would recommend it, to be honest. They're, as I said at the start, they are quite a versatile trio, um, and this is a great collection of their work over the last three years, and it really showcases uh, how their styles evolved. While on one hand, I am a little disappointed that they've sort of gotten rid of what their signature style was a little bit, especially when they, you know, released their Overtime EP. I feel like that was when they really had their signature style and they were, like, in their prime. Um, with this one, they sort of moved on a little bit from that and experimented with other things. Uh, but honestly, at the same time, I'd still say it is definitely worth picking up because for a lot of EDM artists, I find they often stick to their one style, um, and you, it's quite rare that you get some, like, you know, artists or artists that are as diverse as this, like, probably the only um, other group I could think of as of late would be, like, the Knox or something, but, yeah, Cash Cash are definitely quite unique in that sense of being diverse, and also the fact that they're able to try all of these different genres and actually, like, go quite well in a lot of them, because obviously you might think, for an artist that hasn't quite got their footing anywhere yet, then they never quite excel at any of these genres. But I would say, like, for every genre on this album, Cash Cash do have at least one track that absolutely nails it. It mightn't be the most catchiest album of the year and one that, you know, you'll be listening to for years to come, but there is definitely a lot of quality stuff in here. And I've especially learnt lately that you can still have tracks that aren't super catchy but are still pretty good and keep you coming back to listen to over and over. Anyway, that was my review for Cash Cash's latest album, Blood, Sweat and Three Years. Um, let me know what you think of it, if you have listened to it. Um, it's like up on Spotify and everywhere digital and in stores, I think, now as well. Um, I, li I liked it. It was good. I recommend it. Go buy it if you have the money or stream it or whatever. Um, I'll put in the description what has been going on lately as to why I haven't been uploading. Um, again, I don't want to waste my time talking about it here, uh, but I'll give a quick little, you know, description on what's been going on. Um, and hopefully I will see you again soon-ish. I should have a piano tutorial or something up sometime, hopefully that'd be nice. But if not, I will see you whenever. Ciao.